Hey everyone, welcome to another episode out of my video game console review. Uh, this was an episode I originally had done with my camcorder, my VHSC camcorder, but for some reason the DVD disc that I used, apparently part of it was damaged or something, I'm not really sure. But I figured, you know what? I got some extra battery, some new batteries now, might as well try it out. Out here. And also the fact that my memory card is video wise is 150 minutes on this camera so that's pretty cool but anyway let's talk about the newest newest console I want to talk about today and that is the Nintendo GameCube that's right the Nintendo GameCube this system came out about 2000 2001 I believe maybe 2002 around that time frame and this was basically right after the Nintendo 64. And this was during, like they say, another generation of gaming systems. This was during the time when the PS2, the PlayStation 2, which I also have, and will probably do a review of in the future, had came out. And also around the time when Microsoft brought out the first Xbox system. Now, th the one thing that's unique about this system is that a lot of the third-party games that came out for it also came out for the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox. But the difference was, was they didn't come out in big disc. No. As you can probably see here, the disc that are inside here, the game disc, are that size. That's right. This is the size of your game disc. Right here. This is the actual size of it. Now this is the disc that you... Now this here is the disc you got to use to play your Game Boy games with the Game Boy Player and I'll talk about that in a minute. Now initially, speaking of that, the GameCube never came with the Game Boy Player because the player came out afterwards. But what's unique about this system, like I say, is it's small and it's portable. That's right. It's portable. It's a portable system. Now, no, it's not a portable system you could take on the ro road with you and play while you're in the car or the van. No. It's actually a system you could take with you. And let's say you go to grandma's or you go to a relative's and you want to help keep the kids busy. That's one way of doing it right there. The Nintendo GameCube. Now the memory cards, of course, came with it. Memory cards, of course, like with this. And these are memory cards that even now with the Wii, you can put into on the, uh, in the Wii, on the uh, side where the controls are. Now the one advantage that Nintendo did have over um, the PlayStation 2, and I think even the Xbox, was that you were able to play four, you were able to plug in not one, not two, but three, but not one, not two, not three, but four controllers. That's right. You had four controller ports built in instead of two. Well, unlike the PlayStation 2 and I think even the Xbox, you basically had to buy the, uh, the, ex the extension uh, ports, you know, the uh, four player ports, if you will. But this this was the one advantage that even though it was smaller and its games came on smaller discs that it had was the fact that it had it built in already. And that's what people liked about it. And not along with the fact that, like I said, it's portable. Now on the side, now on the back, of course, um, not sure if you can see that, but right here you have your plug-in, you have your plug thing, you have your, uh, you, basically your, put, where you plug in your power supply, and of course you have your AV output right here where you plug in your audio and video component cables. And then this is your digital AV output. This was analog, this was digital. The difference was, let's say you have a HD television, right, like you do now. This would allow you to put it in through digital wire. If you had the digital AV out outputs, basically, like the I think they were the the green and or the green and stuff, the green and the blue and all that, 
If you had those cords, you could also plug those in to the, uh, let's say, your, like I say, your high def television and play GameCube games on there. Yeah, and more beautiful digitalized color. Now, it did come, of course, with a controller. I think it came with one controller. You had to buy additional controllers, I'm not sure. But this here is the original controller. Let me unwrap this here. But this here is the original controller that came with it, which is kind of cool. Has your trigger buttons right here. Has a Z button, a Z button, which was useful in most games. Had two analog. It had two uh, analog um, joysticks, or two joysticks, if you will. One was the C button, but it was more an analog stick. You had your A button, your B button, your Y and Z. And then, like I said, you had two of these. You had your directional button. And a lot of these did come in handy for most uh, games. Fighting games, you definitely had to use, use the, both of these at times. So. But like I said, third party games came out for it, which was pretty cool. Now, speaking of third party, there were also third party controllers that came out as well. Different people, uh, different third party companies released compatible controllers. Like this one here is from Interact. This one was made by Interact. And it works pretty good. I bought several of these, I think three of them. And it's basically a, it's basically a clone of it. But what it's called is a super pad because it allows you to set, it allows you to turn on the rumble or turn it off. You know, like this, like the controller here has a built in rumble, so you know, you can't really turn it off or anything. This one, the third party controller, has allowed you to do that. And as you can tell, the, it's built similar, similarly, I should say, except the D pad's a little bit more different. It's about, basically it's built in a similar fashion. You just see the differences, like with the D-pad and, and stuff. It's supposed to, I guess, when they made these third-party controls, they made it a little bit more easier for your thumbs and for, like, the rubber not to get so damaged. Now, like I said, the games, as I showed you, came on smaller discs. Now, you might ask yourself, well, why would, how could that be? Well, it's real simple. One of, the, one of the disadvantages, I will say, that, Ninten that the GameCube had upon its release, that I think Nintendo kind of took care of separately with an expansion, if you will, or some kind of system, was online. See, the PS2 and the Xbox, they had the online stuff. Nintendo, they did have it for the GameCube, but I think it was like under here where you had to like plug something in or you had to buy another expansion for it. I'm not really sure. Maybe some of you out there can correct me on that. But again, that's why, because of that, because of the fact that they didn't come with the online deal just yet, or it, the online thing wasn't built in, built into the system, was one of the reasons I believe they were able to save on disk space and were able to, along with third-party uh, game distributors and makers, able to make these... Uh, smaller able to release the games on smaller discs and the graphics are just as good there's no doubt about it now speaking of speaking of expansions right here underneath we have what is known I don't know if you can see that we have what is known as the Game Boy Player now you might ask you now you might all kind of recall and you might remember uh, the Super Game Boy, which came out for the uh, Super Nintendo back when the Super Nintendo was very new and they wanted to really show off what it could do. Now, I don't know if Nintendo brought something out similar for the N64. I'm not really sure. I don't think they did, but I could be wrong. But when GameCube came out, Nintendo decided, you know, that one of the complaints, obviously, that they got with the Super Game Boy and they wanted to obviously work on this, was the fact that with the Super Game Boy, you couldn't play all your Game Boy games, especially your Game Boy Color games and stuff. Because it would tell you that this game's not compatible with the Super Game Boy. And that pissed a lot of fans off. 
So I guess Nintendo, what they decided to do was go back to the drawing table and said, you know what? We're bringing this out. Let's show what it can really do. So they decided to create, like I showed you earlier, to create a disc, just like this, to create this disc that you can put into your Game Boy if my thing we might into your GameCube I should say if this thing we would shut. There we go. And basically what it will basically by putting that in, you are able to play your Game Boy games, right? Well not not right off the bat, not you just yet, because you see this came along with this, along with the Game Boy player. So basically you had to connect your Game Boy player to the back of your game your Game Boy player under the back of your GameCube. It had little screws here as you could see. And then what you would do, like I said, is then you would put and after that's all connected and everything, then what you would do is you would put the disc inside here like I just showed you. And then you would take one of your Game Boy game, one of your Game Boy Advance games, and insert it, power it on, and there you go. And again, you got to make sure you have the Game Boy disc in here, or else it won't work. And then the way you were able to get them out is you could either pull them out if you wanted to, or simply there's a little ejection thing right here. Do that. There you go. Now again, one of the issues they fixed over the Game Boy Play, over the uh, Super Game Boy, was now you could also play your Game Boy Color games in there as well. And one of the things that this does that the game, one of the other advantages that this has that the Super Game Boy didn't, and then of course, and of course, just like with the Advance games, just there you go. And then you can also take something like that. Like this is the original. Put it in, and you can play that as well. And again, when you're done, there you go. But one of the other advantages that it has is it actually allows you to select the size of your screen. So, like typically, just like with the Super Game Boy, it would give you like a small screen at first. But if you only wanted to fill up the entire screen, especially let's say you have HD television. All you have to do, I think, is press the uh, right button. I think it's this button right here. And it allows you to expand to a bigger size on the screen, to full screen. So basically, now you could play your Game Boy Color, your Game Boy games, and your Game Boy Advance games on a full screen television, or in this case, nowadays, a full screen HD or 3D television, which was pretty cool which is pretty cool. But that is basically what the Game Boy Player allowed you to do. And overall, that's what the GameCube itself is capable of. Now like I said, when you connected this, when you connected the Game Boy, Advan the Game Boy Player, this is almost similar to how you would connect, I think, a modem or whatever it was needed for online gaming. So, but that, my friends, is my video game console review for this episode of the Nintendo GameCube. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment down below, tell me what you think, and I will talk to you all later.